it's quite fun uh, in the finals and really brings me back. <laughs> I've been Linkin Park all the way, yeah. all the way. Yeah, you got to have your angsty time. For exactly. Sure. All right, well, let's have a look at our men's wall. The men's route, I should say, on the lead wall. Same dimensions as before, 15 metres high, 10 metres overhanging. Starts on the green section. You can see how much it snakes throughout. Finishing on the top. Sadly, won't get to see men and women sharing that last hole, but the men hopefully will get it done for us. A jump at the beginning. Dynamic move there. I like these descriptions. No feet and poor. <laughs> Fingery small holds. Yeah, that's what's going through all of the athletes' heads here, you know. As <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Slippery. Slippery. Hard. Oh, gosh. Jump. Yeah. All right, here we go. Alex Magos is waiting. Big smile on his face backstage. He walks onto the stage. Yeah, and this man has definitely become a, a legend in the climbing community, I would say. Um, super incredible boulder and uh, outdoor climber in general. Um, both on like the lead and, and bouldering side. Um, so it's cool to see him still doing the comps and uh, yeah, doing quite well, of course. All right, here he goes. Yeah, this looks hard off the ground. Yeah, it does straight away. Quite awkward, you know, odd sequences. Goes up with the left, flicks the rope around his foot. It's the first time we get to see an athlete climbing on this as well. The set is described at the bottom as hard, but for these guys, they'll feel more like jugs. But I'm not sure about that, because that women's route is very full on. Yeah, I don't think they ever feel like a jug, but <laughs> they, uh, yeah, I think that the movement just, uh, you're able to recover faster um, than, than other movement, and to them, especially Alex, like, I think that even though it looks like some of these moves are a little bit challenging, like, I'm sure they're not taxing too much. Yeah, he's looking super confident as he crosses through. Good reading from him. But now he's almost got a I'll drop side where he's kind of traverses over to the right. Gonna have to jump over, but keeps the right foot nicely off. Looks like that almost uh, might have been intended as a double uh, dyno. Uh, I'm not sure if other athletes will read it that way, but uh, it was cool to yeah see him be able to stack that. Seemingly easy. Yeah, like set that toe. the safer method anyway. Yeah. Really like that rest he, he got right there. He's quite a flexible climber in, in mobile. He is. He reaches up to the pocket underneath the small roof, and this is where the angles change. Up towards the second of the slopers, I think the one on the left like, completely ignores it. It is chalked, but he doesn't use it as a handhold. These slopers look bad. Nice. Strong from Alex. And he gets a good knee bar in, or at least scrubbing. He'll take this moment to chalk, because he now has to go from the far right of the wall over, over towards the middle. Yeah, he's doing a good job of finding those rests, as, as you said, and, um, you know, uh, executing with them and using them uh, efficiently. Yeah, maybe that outdoor talent coming in here, finding rests and judging sections. He's going to milk this a bit, shakes out that right hand. Looks down at the clock. The athletes can see the clock. It points literally straight up at them. It's interesting, this rest, uh, like his left arm when he grabs it is, uh, you know, bent and he's like pulling in. So it looks like it uh, uh, lends itself to, yeah, being more of a right hand rest than, than a left one. And that sometimes, you know, really plays into uh, how well an athlete can recover. All right, Alex is doing well here, near, nearing the top third of the route. Makes a high clip above his head, though. He's really going to have to stretch for that. Yeah, this route really looks like an adventure. <laughs> nice. It's looking really calm and collected here. Is it difficult for you to watch this and not... Are you seeing how you would do sequences on this wall? Maybe a little bit, but it's also super exciting to see how others uh, can perform. And, um, you know, as I said before, like, it's a super talented men's field. And every time I, you know, watch a round like this, like, I'm always learning stuff from, from watching him, watching... Uh, everyone else in the final too. So it's a treat. Alex with a very high left foot makes another good clip, but he's nearing the last part of this yellow and black section.
Right foot locked underneath in the heel, into the pinches, bumps the right hand and gets another heel. Root setters playing with these black volumes to create even more 3D likeness on this wall. Yeah, looking quite strong here. He's looking very, very good. He's an athlete that's uh, four days on right now, so it's cool to, to see him still fighting really hard and able to perform. Oh, falls on the left hand. That was a good performance from Alex. And yeah, it's worth also saying that like he's been in so many competitions and uh, you know has performed so much outdoors that he has this whole like library of outdoor and indoor movement experience and uh, you know just like being able to have those uh, different moves like in your back pocket and you know like this toe, the knee bar, uh, being able to like use those um, on the wall and know when to execute. He's really talented at it and you can really see it uh, in his climbing. Look at how powerful that shoulder is, just friction alone keeping him on. This is where he felt. Right hand up into the pinch and then got a good left foot, but it's awkward because it's being pushed out from the wall by that black volume. For sure. Yeah, it looks like you really want to like shift your, your hips over left onto that foot. Um, but obviously it's really hard to do that when you're tired. Satoni Yoshida from Japan enters the stage. We haven't seen him climb since Morioka in Japan last year for the combined competition. So not either not being selected or not choosing to compete in the boulder. Yeah, I think he was a uh, top 10 in the lead circuit last year, so uh, it's, it's impressive, like, the Japanese have a whole, like, lead contingency, uh, which is making finals right now, which is really cool. Um, so just focusing on the lead season and not the combined, whereas, um, you know, I would say that the uh, majority of athletes this year are focusing on both. Uh, he is about to get underway, make sure of the left hand and launches up into the green section. Coming up to 8.50 here in Innsbruck. My name is Matt Groom. I'm joined by Jesse Gruper in the commentary box from Team USA. Hello. Great to have your insights as we watch Satone climbing. Blocked crimp, you have to be accurate. Like Alex did, just being very precise with his moves, reading it well. Those uh, dots on his arm, by the way, they are <laughs> titanium or some kind of metal that a lot of athletes used last season. I got many, many questions about this. It's sort of, uh, who knows if science or uh, psychology plays a part in those things, but we do see quite a few athletes use them. Yeah, I've always thought they're for anti-perspirant, but, you know, I think uh, rumors <laughs> yes, exactly. have, have been spread. Crosses over and... Different from Alex. Alex did it very statically. So Tony used the swing and momentum to pull him round. Yeah, I think Alex still like was able to do it dynamically. Um, he just like, uh, yeah, maybe started the motion a little bit more dynamically to begin with. Okay, so Tony rests for a set, chalks up, and then carries on. Ooh, cuts loose with the feet, but then gets the toe in. Nice. Yeah, and these are the holds that actually like were in the, the bouldering final. Um, so <laughs> they have been in bouldering final. So yeah, definitely not easy easy grips out there. Not at all. He's not. Oh, now he's using the Alex knee. The Alex knee. He's using the knee bar that Alex used. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look as comfortable for him, I would say. He's using his right knee, and I think Alex uses his left. Yeah, it doesn't look quite as locked in. Alex took a long time here, and it. You can see them Lee moving around. Alex's knee just didn't move when he had it in position. Yeah, and coming out of that rest a little bit faster than Alex as well. Yeah, plenty of time. Clock's on the bottom right of your screen. The athlete has to clip the final quick draw before that finishes. Yeah, I think Alex was actually around like two minutes by this point. Um, usually he's like a very fast climber, but it seems like uh, Sidoni is moving, yeah, even more quickly. Cool. Yeah, he's motoring through this, but he tried to make this clip and then decided not to. Run for the different position. That looks easier. And then gets a heel where the setters definitely didn't want him to get a heel. They blocked it. And he's... 
perhaps regretting not resting earlier because he wanted something back there. Yeah, I think he was trying to figure out if he could take another rest before coming into this uh, top of the wall. Still climbing That's, it powerfully. Yeah, still looks strong. And he's moving really quickly. And you do tend to see this at the beginning of the lead season that athletes are maybe in bolder shape. And I asked a few of them what their tactics were, and they just said, I'm going to climb as quickly as possible. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that he's one that, uh, you know, has been just focusing on the lead season, unlike Alex. So he's been able to, uh, you know, kind of take time to uh, really be able to uh, train, like, recovery. And, um, you know, it seems, it seems like it's paying off, like, on this ball right now, for sure. Yeah, he's approaching Alex. His high oh. point falls with the left cross through. And, okay, next up, Alberto Hines Lopez enters the big stage. calm and collected, a man used to the pressure. I and mean, there is no bigger stage than the Olympic stage where he won gold. Not too bad. <laughs> it's all right, isn't it? And of course, speed has been dropped, well not dropped, sorry, separate discipline in the next Olympics. And I think for a lot of the lead and boulders, they will be happy with that decision. For sure. Did you do much speed training along the way? I did once for uh, collegiate nationals. Yeah, Were you it good? was pretty fun. Uh, I was excited with <laughs> the improvement over time. I, I wouldn't say that I'm good compared to any of the, the other athletes out there, but uh, or at least on the world stage, but uh, it was a lot of fun. All right, Alberto with the heels in. Green shoes matching the green holds. Yeah, color coordination is everything. It's important. It really is. Yeah. I consider the wardrobe. Well, they consider the wardrobe. <laughs> All right, right foot out. Drills it in. Presses with the left shoulder. Nice. There's the Olympic rings. You can see them hiding around the corner of his arm. The Anyas are on her right ankle. Good route reading and easily through this part. And will we see method number three here? <laughs> so many methods. Someone sent us, uh, someone sent Alana a mathematical breakdown of how many moves, uh, how many possibilities there were on a boulder the other day. Oh, nice. big swing from Alberto. Yeah, so smooth. He's quite powerful as well. Yeah, trained a lot with Adam Ondra back in the day. Right hand sticking on the sloper, and he's coming up to the first possible rest. Brings a right leg up, left in, and he immediately gets the left knee bar. It'll be interesting to see if the rest of the Japanese athletes have read that the same way as, uh, as Satone did, or whether they've changed things, because Satone did not see this. Yeah, sometimes I think that, uh, you know, the Japanese athletes, um, either because of a uh, language barrier or because there are so many of them, kind of like can, uh, you know, just like sequence with one, one another. And then the Europeans might, uh, or whoever else is in the finals, might also have their own contingency. Um, so it can be interesting, like, how they come up with certain betas. Yeah, we saw the Korean team in the semi final misread a sequence down exactly. low yesterday. Yeah, that's Both really rough when that happens when your whole team kind of uh, makes the same mistake. Yeah, half for us as well, because you know <laughs> that they might yeah. be doing it wrongly. Yeah, it's kind of like a blueprint, I would say. Like, I think when you're on the wall, like, you're still looking for other alternatives and other solutions. Um, uh, and I think that's really important to lead climbing as a, as a game overall. Um, not that you're just, yeah, committing to the same sequence, but it's also important to keep moving and trust yourself on the wall. Right, so Alberto. Oh, nice. It's the three minute mark on the clock. Yeah, also getting here faster than I would say like Alex did. I think there might have been some blood on that hold actually. <laughs> yeah, blood not meant to be there. I wonder where that's come from. It was Alberto yeah. or someone before. It's harder to call someone down for a blood thing <laughs> when yeah, they're up on a lead walk. Alberto rocks up on that right heel. Fumbles the clip the first time, gets it the second and shakes out. Yeah, I really think these quick shakes up here are going to be everything. Oh, a hesitation there, the right foot nice. moved and bobbled for a sec. This is a 
a move I think Satone struggled with. He did, yeah, crossing through to this. Oh, oh foot goes. Not sure if he'll give him the plus there. As his body was yeah, falling. he didn't seem to go towards the next yeah, hole. Yeah, even though his hand was going up. Oh. That's hard. I know also the IFSC like pays out through eighth. Oh, so really? yeah, so I think that uh whoever ends up in ninth doesn't get paid and then the rest of the finals gets gets money. I did not know that. Yeah. So we should start so crowdfunding. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Get someone funded. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah, I feel like they should like Yeah, definitely. Yeah, add a little better. Something. Come on guys, get your wallets out. <laughs> Consolation prize. Yes. Alright, Majesty is on. Yeah, so Mejdi, I think, uh, you know, he had a really successful start of the bouldering season and uh, did a few comps and then uh, stepped away from them in order to pursue lead. So obviously paid off for this final and it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, if he can keep it up. All right, here we go. He has taken some time away to work on his lead. His teammate Orian Berton missing from this comp. She's choosing to go away. And we have seen athletes picking and choosing events this year as we build up towards the World Champs in Bern, beginning of August. She's coming frighteningly close now, just uh, from a bit away. Yeah, pretty cool. Mejdi in the corner, reaches up to the first of the pockets. Yeah, and I think this final you're really seeing that decision of what comps to do really paying off, like him not doing the bouldering round so that he can have a slightly better lead round, hopefully, uh, I think, you know, has, has worked out. Um, and I think it is like a very tactical decision, like which comps you're doing, and it's part of the game of, of this season. Absolutely is. Everyone wanting to qualify the Olympics and that World Champs is the first opportunity to do that. And double points as well for Continental. For sure. Yeah, it's definitely when you want to peek, I think. <laughs> Big swing, but he loves those kind of moves and makes it look simple. For sure. Up into the pocket. Up to the slopers. A little foot slip there. A foot slip, but he gets that left in. I do wonder why they chalk that left volley. Maybe it's a bit of a red herring. Yeah, I'm not sure either. It seems to everyone, no one's even gone near it. It's just a toe hook. For sure. Sometimes I feel like there's just chalk on a hold and they don't take it off, but yeah, hopefully, usually setters wouldn't do that. I do think one thing to note, like I think that uh, setters have started trying to add in more dynamic moves or, uh, you know, like a bowler move here or there. And um, I think it's, it's always interesting to me because even though like it might look to the crowd, um, you kind of like have to give them a better hold to either jump to or jump off of, uh, which leads to a rest that you're seeing right here. So um, I think like, you know, it's exciting, but I think also like it's exciting to see people continually get pumped and maybe not rest. So I think there's like a definitive drawback to adding in moves like that. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. It's, it's a good point. Yeah, because if you're jumping around, you need it a bit bigger. We just saw a shot of Helen there. Oh, maybe cuts loose. That will have cost him a little bit of energy. Yeah, but he's looking really strong too. He is. Always exciting to see him climb. Look at that one arm drop down. The crowd love that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I often know the shots that are going to be on an IFSC uh, Instagram <laughs> page, and I think that one might be on it. Oh, but just as he swings out, doing a bit of his own style here. Micro shakes, but he's approaching the first real crux of this route. Yeah, it's impressive he's able to rest here. I know other athletes sort of have like tried to find a, a good position, so it's cool that he's able to get a couple of shakes there. Left hand on the pinch. Yeah, and even though he was like sort of jumping around there before, like I think he looks like he kind of calmed down for the section. Um, in order to, to execute up here. Well, let's see if he can do this move. He slid the right toe out to catch He's himself. To nice, oh. He falls there too. Same move, wow. Tell you what, Alex, who came out first in 44 plus, is, is looking good at the moment. I mean, he has won a World Cup before, so. <laughs> of fighting to do before he gets to that stage. Yeah, and I also think he might be the only finalist who was also in the bouldering final. Uh, so, you know, that's extra skin, that's extra energy. 
qualifiers was at 8 a.m. in the morning, the day after finals, which finished at around like 10 p.m. So um, I don't know what number he went, but you know, it definitely wasn't much sleep of a night. And uh, I hope he, yeah, has recovered and uh, able to to show his best out here. I saw Brooks' Instagram; she was cycling into ISO at like six in the morning or something. Yeah. Early start. Yeah, I was second on my route, and uh, yeah, it was definitely a pre-six wake-up call there. So yeah. Alright, here we go. Serato. Takes his time, rests at the beginning, just make sure he's chalked up and ready. I've heard the word uh, sticky be used a lot for yes. describing his style for sure. Yeah, I got Super told impressive. that. And, and once you've been told that, you can't um, I know. see it, you know? <laughs> yeah. He yeah, puts his bit. hand on and it doesn't move. Yeah, once yeah. he's touched it, that's it. Yep. Clips. So the crowd, they're asked to cheer, they do. It really is absolutely packed down in the stadium. Yeah, definitely pretty cool that, you know, like uh, someone who's um, ne nearly half Alex's age is, uh, you know, competing in the same final and, uh, you know, could, could out outpace him in some way. Yeah, you do feel like there's a bit of a changing of the guard. Yeah. At the top level at the moment. Having but, said that, Jakob is out soon, and yeah, he's definitely. For sure. Yeah, at the same time, like I think it is an older final for sure than like uh, some of the the bouldering ones. All right, so Sticky Serato sticks well. Look at that swing. Kept his legs together, controlled it. High left toe hook. That's clever. Now we saw Alex with the high right toe hook. Looks like the high left one also works. Yeah, it's kind of begging, begging out for it, isn't it? They're good toes that. Using the rubber on top of the shoes. And that left foot just has not moved. It feels like the first half of this route is a case of not over-gripping, not getting pumped, saving yourself from the middle section. <laughs> Crazy that he's resting right before there. Nice. Oh, he needs to get a foot up for a moment. He battled. He'll make the clip, and I think he's going to lock the knee, and he's seen it. No, he hasn't seen it yet. Yeah, it's interesting, like, different body sizes kind of fit into rest differently. Like, I think that for Alex, maybe it was uh, pretty convenient to keep that knee, but for him, maybe it's not, not needed. Maybe he's not even as that tired right now. <laughs> Just outrageous to think yeah. about. Yeah, he looked comfortable in that straight arm position on it. Didn't really need the knee. But look, he's resting in interesting places, always with the toes. He's using every opportunity to shake out. Yeah, it's true. I think it's always interesting, like what athletes decide to use, like toes, heels, um, kind of shows to your strengths. That's right. So Rato crosses underneath. Right hand in the pocket, and everyone knows what's coming though. Holds the swing. Super exciting now. The sun gone, long gone. The spotlight. Picking him out. Up to the pinch with the right hand. Another pinch. Final series of Crimson. This is where the athletes have really struggled so far. Swings again. Cutting feet there. Oh, and he misses the left as well. So the points all around 42 plus. Only Alex getting through so far, but Serato jumps up to silver with that due to count back. And I think he must be pretty happy with that. So halfway, th more than halfway through now. Look at the concentration. Fingertips on. Found a left toe on that left hand. 
Yeah, I think this just shows how stacked the field of men is. Uh, just that everyone's kind of getting to the same position. Um, like, you know, it just uh, represents like everyone is is there and everyone is uh, fully capable of uh, making these moves and, and doing them well. Yeah, really exciting in this final. Yeah, yeah. Alex still holding down the fort. <laughs> Shaking his head there. Yeah, and he's fully on it. Serato was a high. Yeah, he had a really incredible uh, season last year. He's been uh, competing since at least 2019. Uh, we were in like a final together way back then. Uh, and it's, yeah, really incredible to, yeah, see him bounce back from that ankle injury and be all the way back on a World Cup final. I always think your style is quite similar to him, which is that I'm terrified the entire time he's climbing. <laughs> like, I just never know with either of you when you're pumped, when you're going to fall off, when you're absolutely fine. I think he looks a little bit better than me, I would say. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, he's a really talented climber, and um, I think his style is, uh, yeah, definitely conducive to mine as well, and I think we get along in that sense. <laughs> yeah, it's just he, both of you can just grind out moves way past the point where you have any right to be still on the wall. It's incredible <laughs> to watch both of you. We earn our right. You do, you really do. <laughs> all right, Tyson is underway. You can see all of the athletes on our leaderboard stuck around that 42 point. Alex just ahead. I think he's usually actually an athlete who, um, you know, maybe like performs the best in a final. Uh, you know, there have been several times when he, he like came out uh, kind of low down in a final and then uh, came back pretty fast. So really interested to see like how he, uh, yeah, can perform here. What's he like at Boulder? Do you know? Uh, I only think he uh, competed in Morioka, and I think he did okay. Um, I think he, I, I want to say he made the semis uh, at least there. Um, I would have to check though. Yeah, I have a yeah. look. No, I just wonder if you'd ever bowled with him. Yeah, yeah, that was the only time, and I was impressed for sure. Yeah, he was sixth in Morioka. Yeah, it doesn't really tend to do any bolder comps. I'm looking down his stat list now. It's all lead fourth in uh, the FISU Games, which was the university championships last year for Boulder. Yeah, I think the Japanese team is just so stacked that uh, even though he's so talented at lead, um, yeah, there just might not be a position for him. Crazy, isn't it? Boulders, yeah. Well, the USA team, pretty stacked as well. You guys have to fight for selection. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, interesting, like, uh, mobility, I feel like, is really playing a role in this this rest. Uh, athletes who might be a little bit more on the mobility side of things, like, are able to get that toe and do a quick shake, like we saw with uh, Serato and, and Megos. So, kind of interesting. Taisa comes up towards the first rest, making sure of the feet. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I think the past two athletes, actually, um, each of them have slipped on those feet, so pretty smart of him to play a little bit more careful. Yeah, he's looking good. That's the heavily taped ankle. Brings the right up and yeah, really depending. I think I think you're completely right about this rest. Although the need looks from an observer like it's best to put it in, sometimes it, you just don't necessarily need it. I mean, he's using it, but sometimes just having a straight arm and the foot up For sure. does, does enough. Yeah, and he came second in the overall series last year, so definitely has a lot of experience uh, on this stage. He knows what he's doing up there. He does indeed. <laughs> Finding those rests and keep moving. Yeah, he's gonna have to find something special to get through that crux. Because someone needs to sit on that nose. <laughs> someone, <laughs> please. See it. I just want to see someone sitting on it and waving at the crowd. <laughs> Tyson crosses under, pops a foot, but holds on. I think we saw Mitchell do that as well. This is cool going feet first. And getting the clip. Yeah, first. he made that look okay. And now he's got to do this drop down on that left arm. But he has the toe in as well. Oh, he just casually unwinds. This is very different. He spins. Yeah. Full canvas there. I know Meiji did that as well, but uh, yeah, we haven't seen many athletes do a full, a full campus. No, off of those holds. Tyson yeah. up the left now into this pinchy part. Of the All the holds similar. Yeah, he's really talented at recovering off of these uh, small shakes. Um, so I think like even though he's looking a little bit tired, like I think he's able, he'll be able to get it back and find a couple 
microshakes. What do those microshakes allow you to do? Like, what, what are you looking for in that moment? Uh, I think it's a couple of things. One is just sort of like lowering your heart rate, but uh, two would also be, um, yeah, like taking a couple of breaths for, for the heart rate and then uh, kind of just making your forearms feel a little bit better as well. Um, you know, if they start getting pumped, uh, just like doing that quick uh, relaxation allows you to add a little bit more tension. Uh, he's been doing lots of them, so let's hope he's got something back here. Out into the pitches again, and this is where everyone else has started to suddenly really focus because things get hard here. Definitely looking a little tired, but oh, he's looking a bit tired. He falls as well. And look, and look, he was hobbling there on the ground, so I think it was more the rope than the bad ankle. Yeah, everyone kind of doing their best, and I think he's really been a good. Um, yeah, sort of like leader in that respect. Like, I think he's always like really friendly with like other teams and, uh, you know, able to give back and not like, um, you know, just wanting to win every comp. Yeah, he's um, a climber's climber, Alex. Yeah, yeah exactly, it, exactly. It? Yeah, yeah. Like, I think that's what is uh, distinct for this sport versus other ones in a lot of ways. Yeah, very, very I'm sure he'd be excited to win too, but, you know. <laughs> Yeah, well, he, he wants people to do their best. Yeah, he wants to beat someone climbing at their absolute limit because right. then you've won properly. Yeah. Seeing everyone slip off is... Exactly. Yeah, or if everyone, like, tops because the route yeah, is too, too easy. easy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you want to earn it. Right. That uh, is Mashihiro. He gets going. He's another one who hasn't competed since Morioka in Japan. Yeah, also top 10 in uh, the series ranking last year. So... Yeah, he's got lots of potential. He was second in Jakarta last year in last year's uh, sweaty comp. Yeah, I, I think he also uh, um, podiumed at uh, the World Games as well. Um, yeah, very strong climber. Very yeah, confident second, too. Second in World Games. Uh, well, we know by now that the bottom, apart from if they make a mistake, should be okay. It's just keeping it together for those black volumes up high. Who can break through there? Challenge Alex for the top. We got a couple coming. <laughs> we do, yeah. So we have, this is Mashihiro, and we've got Jakob Schubert and Sasha Lehmann. Two very popular climbers out. But right now, Mashihiro is going to make a play for the podium. Mejdi in bronze, Serato in silver, Alex gold. This thing stand in a wild swing there. Yeah, that was a cool foot kick. Sometimes that's hard to uh, add into uh, a dynamic move like that. Um, but he tends to climb, I think, like uh, quite powerful. And I think that's something he, uh, at least looking at like the semifinals and some of the qualifiers this year, like I think he's really been able to control like both being able to do those more dynamic moves um, in an uncontrolled way and then coming back and being able to rest, which hopefully we'll see after this move. Nice. Jump to the shoulder press. It's the right foot up. Shaking out hard. I think I'm, j I'm like as interested in how they're resting as how they're climbing the route. I find it really interesting. Yeah, it's pretty cool that, uh, you know, it, it almost looks like everyone has a different kind of rest position that's their favorite. I think Alex used it the longest. Like, he was there for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I think, like, by the time he got to the black chips, he was at, like, two minutes. And I think a lot of the other athletes are moving a little bit faster. Yeah, Mashihiro doesn't use it that long. Swap the leg a couple of times. And again, this clip's been done a few different ways too. Oh, really having to fight. And he gets the high heel in, and I think he's going to drop down before making the clip. Yeah, keeping those feet on. Oh, he's swinging for a sec. Yeah, it's sometimes so it's hard to aim for those uh, swinging draws for sure. Yeah, because it's long. That swing, oh, if you wow. do miss it. What's that? What was he standing on there? Yeah, just uh, smearing on the wall, but making it look chill. What <laughs> was the underkling? Oh, wow. Yeah. He's doing some wild stuff out here. All right, left hand on the pinch, bumps up to the next one. Okay, how much has he managed to save? Wow, <laughs> yeah. I'm just imagining a car's petrol gauge, you know, like yeah. where is he on that? Is he full? Is he empty halfway? He looks like he's fitting into this uh, somewhat rest position pretty well. Yeah, he'll shake out all he can. He's got to make that right clip and he's going to do so with the high heel. Oh, the double. Nice clip. Yeah, that's smart. It's good to see all the bolts block. Oh, well, but wow. he slips. 
And I think he might be running out of that fuel gauge here. Oh, nice. Just on the left. Still Very on. Strong. Oh, and then he falls. Also, oh, not quite getting the plus either. Oh. So outside oh. of a podium for him. Yeah, that means uh, Alex will for sure be on the podium. All right, Alex, uh, Alex Jakob Schubert comes out. And I was very excited to see him and Jesse here because the crowd just respond like that, and it is exciting. Yeah, he's definitely won a couple medals before. He's, uh, you know, uh, had a lot of great results in the past, and, um, you know, this crowd, like some of them probably have been watching him for over 10 years yeah. compete on the stage, so um, I'm sure they're excited to see him try to do it again. I talked to him the other day, and we were talking about Boulder and Lead, and, you know, he understands that perhaps the Boulder world has moved into the very young, you know, they've grown up on these dynamic parkour-style boulders that we can see, but Lead, he's still super confident that he's got it, I and mean, he does, he's so good at this. For sure. Yeah, I think the, like, hold type uh, has really changed um, the game for bouldering, uh, and even though that's being presented in rope, I think still it's a fitness game, and, uh, you know, some hopefully, like, the most resistant climber wins here still. It's what you want, you want them to be fighting endurance and pump and everything else. Yeah. Of course, great to have like a couple tricky moves here and there too, but um, yeah, always nice when people can put in a fight. And I think we've really seen that on this route, even though everyone's kind of getting to the same spot. Yeah. And we're, we're seeing everyone battles. Jakob is uh, he's climbing well, but he's taking his time through here. Yeah, I bet he also knows that uh, he can rest halfway through the, the route. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him rest a little bit longer um, in that position. And uh, I think it's okay, maybe in his mind, to like be a little bit more careful there, just so that um, you know, make to the rest, be safe, and then um, you know, the rest will come. But yeah. Not needing to maybe save as much energy by moving fast and potentially risking a slip. Yeah, let's see if he has seen it. It's coming up. He's got to get this done first, though. Nice. Yeah, that looks so so smooth. Maybe the most static that we've seen it. Awesome from Yako. Right. Matches and here he's just taking a moment to shake out before committing. Yeah. Pretty cool. We haven't seen anyone uh, do this rest without a toe, so pretty neat. He's climbed on this wall a lot. They have like a lot of uh, outdoor walls or outdoor uh, routes here uh, normally when there's not a competition. So he knows this wall really well, and I kind of wonder if that's also uh, you know uh, nice to like be competing in your hometown. Absolutely. I mean, everyone gets it if you've got yeah. a World Cup. I mean, you guys had it in Salt Lake. You know. Yeah, but also just like knowing all the cracks and uh, features of the wall, the wall changes, I think is, a, is an advantage in some way. Yeah, it's a good point. He'll know every angle change, won't he? Every screw hole. Yeah, nice. Uh, Looking really smooth there. Well, let's see if he can find this rest. And he immediately locks in the left. Yeah, him and Alex often talk about beta, I would say, and uh, I'm sure they were like psyched to see that knee bar. All right, he thought about changing it, stays with the left. And interesting, he's crimping that rest rather than, I think Alex was on the, the on the sloper like that. Yeah, I think he's really trying to find a position where he can let both of his arms be straight. Um, and there he goes, yeah. Yeah, he's doing exactly as Alex did. So resting to let the clock tick down. I mean, he knows tops haven't been a thing and therefore you might as well rest because it's right. unlike, you know, it's likely that there's going to be a tricky sequence here coming up so you might as well use it yeah I think he's also smart as far as like uh, you know trying to move the foot as much as possible trying to find the optimal position and you know he definitely is a person who knows how to rest <laughs> All right, wow. yeah, well the most dramatic music yeah, in the wow. background I wouldn't want that on my rest I have to say no <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I like climb with the music, so like the more intense it gets, it's almost like okay, I need to climb faster now. Do you hear but, it? I was gonna ask. Yeah, that. for for sure. I, I try to tune it out as much as possible, but you know, like a beat drop, like what just happened, yeah. it's hard to ignore. Yeah, because I find it affects me in the commentary box. I never know if it's the athletes as well when you when you climb. Jakob makes the clip from the heel. Yeah. He's just. Yeah, incredible on crimps, I would say. So that probably did feel like a jug to him. <laughs> that heel as well. I can't believe he oh, wow. get a heel. Oh, Getting the foot up really high. That's interesting. Oh, yes. We haven't seen any athletes do that yet. No, he's got look at Finding a rest, yeah. This is such good climbing from Jakob. Yeah, that was really smart. But 
is it showing the fact he's tired, the fact he's having to find these rests, but look at that rotation as he gets the heel in. Yeah, I think sometimes it's just like a reset, like it's not even like uh, you're necessarily super tired, you just like are like, okay, I know this next section is going to be hard and there aren't going to be rests, so let me take advantage of the rest that I have right here. Oh, he gets the heel underneath. Yeah. Interesting, yeah, not getting any quick shakes there, but maybe he doesn't need it. All right, there we go. Yeah, here the micro shake start because this is it. This is the sequence, left hand. Wow. And he's, look, he's in tired. eighth, and he, he could move to first in just a couple of holds. Yeah, he's not being that quick quite yet. He's he wants to bring it. that right foot up. Oh, wow. Nice, oh, oh. he falls on 42. I think he'll get the plus, though. I would be surprised. All right, Sasha Lehman is out, and crowd favorite. He hasn't had the best of Boulder seasons in the top 30 in Innsbruck the other day. Seoul 60th, but his lead where we love to watch him go. He was 16th in Jakarta, 6th in Edinburgh, but 2nd in Copper. Yeah, so uh, even though he competed in bouldering, uh, since he didn't make the semis, he was able to have a rest day right before this competition started. And, you know, that is a, is a big benefit, I would say, to compared to Alex and uh, Jakob. Um, and he was looking really strong in the semis yesterday. He was, Under yeah. A lot of confidence. And fresh as well. Yeah, and he's our last hope for the elephant trunk. <laughs> please, someone sit yeah, on it. please. Otherwise, Jess is going to have to climb it after dark, and it will be highly illegal, and he might get arrested. We don't want that. Don't make me do anything illegal. Sasha, come on. <laughs> All right, here we go. Again, we have a tune change to uh, rank up the tension. He's looking to get above Alex's 44 plus. Jakob Schubert on 42 plus, but because of countback, he's ahead of Serato, who's in bronze, also on 42 plus. I said yesterday, it depends on what kind of Sasha turns up. And yesterday, Sasha really turned up. But every now and again, he can have a moment. So I'm nervous when I watch Sasha climb. For sure. Oh, yeah, and I think I, you could hear Alex in the background cheering for him. You know, once again, like I think he wants uh, everyone to be able to do the best, even if it cost him the, the gold there. Yeah, well, Alex was greeting uh, Jakob and watching him on stage. He was standing up, giving him a big hug until a couple of seconds ago. So Alex getting behind everyone. Nice. Straight into the heel. Yeah, pretty cool to see a heel. Like, I don't think anyone's used a heel there. Only toes so far, so finding his way. Exciting stuff. Can anyone knock Alex off up into the dip, into the pocket? <laughs> On the slopers. You can see that left hand sliding. <laughs> nice. Good work from Sasha. Now we know the key is milking this rest. Yeah. Yeah, definitely like a little taxing for him on that lower section. Maybe he's just a little bit nervous. Yeah, breathes right. out. He does get a bit nervous sometimes, and when he does, you can see it affect him. But I also think that like having a rest in the middle to kind of calm down, uh, breathe a little bit, I think will only help him. I didn't want to say it before, but I think it's really impressive that uh, all nine guys were able to get through those uh, pretty challenging sections. That, what we're seeing just now, by the way, is where he needs to get to. Just past that. Yeah, moving a little faster through that rest, but he's also one that can do quick shakes and get a lot back. Oh, he's very stretched out here, though. Makes it work and kicks from the right hand. All right, Sasha gets going. Onto the pinches, all important here. Yeah, moving nice and uh, efficiently through these sections for sure. Ooh, maybe he doesn't like that hold. Nice. Right, up to the pinches, here we go. Sasha Lehman, head flicking as he tries to see the next hold. Yeah, 
Great to be able to get a couple shakes right here. <laughs> he looks like brick casualties. He looks down at the clock. Jakob and Alex sitting next to each other. They can see Alex shouting up. Yeah. He's a very distinct yell. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha nearing the position now, but he's still in ninth. This is what's mad about this final. Nice. But looking solid now, Here's really giving to work. Cutting loose with the left heel in, reaches yeah, there through. We go. And the crowd behind him immediately Making losing the second up. position. Now this, oh, wow, is, this is it. This is it. This is where Alex fell. Can Sasha do it? Oh. Well, he touches it. So Where's currently he he's on 44. If he gets the plus, he will win. It looked like he had the plus. He, he touched it. There and we go. And he has. So that plus, wow. oh, they made us wait for it, Jesse, but he's <laughs> moved into gold. Oh, just incredible. I'm trying to remember when, when Sasha last won a combo. I need to look back here. I think it was Valar. Uh, in like 2019, maybe, but I'm just making that up. Yeah, I mean, he won the World Games. Yeah. God, yeah. this is scrolling back through the stats. Well, Sasha Lehman takes victory. Yeah, uh, Moscow, Erdogan's Continental Championship. Oh, I'll find it out later. Regardless, Sasha takes victory here. And now the athletes are presented. Jesse will go down to the front. Alex stands up, silver medal for him, and Jakob, awesome for him to get the bronze, but Sasha Lehman deserves every moment of that gold medal. I remember in Moscow when he just failed to qualify for the Olympics, how devastated he was after that.